what to plant in summer and just some of the thoughts and planning processes that you might want to go through on paper so that you get the seeds ordered you need and you have your soil and everything ready to rock an abundant summer garden. Uh, as we move into summer, some things like your uh, cilantro will bolt and go to seed, the lettuce will begin to get bitter or you've just harvested it and you know broccoli maybe gets covered by aphids so you're cycling things through. So here is a conceptual summer uh, layout. And an important thing I want to point out first is if you visualize these green X's as your, your key plants, like whether they're the squash or cherry tomatoes or cucumbers or peppers or corn, things that take up a lot of room, both vertically and horizontally, when they're small, you know, so a squash plant, at first you plant a seed and it's just, it's little and then it grows to about the size of a dinner plate. And then once the summer heat comes on, then it grows fast. But you could be planting green beans right next to them that grow quickly because a, a bush green bean for snap beans might only take 50 days, 60 days for a harvest, or you can grow uh, quick growing herbs like dill or basil or another crop of lettuce because we want to be eating salads all the time. So planting romaine varieties of lettuce are more adapted to heat and resist bolting. So those can fit in between the larger plants of like a summer squash or zucchini or cherry tomatoes. Another important Thing you want to consider in a summer garden is just the spatial organization of everything. So, you know, things like beans, they're just a compact little plant, kind of like peppers, and visualize like, oh, it takes up about that much space. And instead of just straight up rows, think in terms of triangles and hexagons so that you can visualize, like imagine if you're putting a bunch of soccer balls together and you were just line them up in rows versus uh, kind of zigzagging them, you could fit them in more tightly. So some folks will even, you know, with a, in the loose soil, kind of create that pattern. Uh, or I encourage you having a planting stick that helps you achieve the proper spacing. And it can be just any stick that you measure to the right spacing. You know, so squash wants to be about 18 inches to 24 inches apart. Same with cherry tomatoes, whereas, uh, yep, peppers and cucumbers would be on that spacing, but basil, the plants can be four to six inches together. Dill, one inch apart, can be really close and you just pull them up. Lettuce, you want about 10, 12 inches. I added corn on here, and this is again to the spatial understanding. So crops like squash and cucumbers are vine crops. So they can, if it's planted here, here, it can literally spill over. Its leaves can spread out and you can be interacting with the plant and growing it that way. Uh, cucumbers in particular could cascade down the side and still be productive. Whereas corn, if you grow corn in here, let's say the sun is over here and these are all corn plants, then the things behind it are gonna get shaded. Unless of course you grow pole beans, which would climb up the corn. So you just, you have to map this out and think this through. Otherwise that's a super common novice garden mistake is to plant things too close together they compete for nutrients and water and they shade one another out and you don't get good productivity. Lettuce is a crop that you can use that shade to your advantage because in the summer heat, when it gets up into the 90s Fahrenheit, lettuce is not so fond of that. But if it's in the shade of corn or some trellised cherry tomatoes, and you know, trellised cherry tomatoes can get four or five feet tall easily, that lettuce is going to be totally happy growing in the shade in between those plants. So I'm sharing this with basically some ideas, but to get you to think conceptually in terms of over time from, you know, mid-May when you maybe are starting these crops to what's it going to be like by mid-June, what's it going to be like August 1st, and kind of go through the season. So corn I put down here at the bottom of the list because as much as you may love sweet corn, I know I do, it takes a lot of room and you usually only get one or two ears per stock. So you may not want to use your valuable real estate for growing sweet corn, whereas peppers continue to produce over a long season. And even when they're done, you can, when frost is threatening, you could pull them up from the roots and continue to have, particularly the chili peppers will mature once the plant's off. Same uh, with the cucumbers and cherry tomatoes, uh, squash and beans they produce over a long time of the year so if you really want to maximize your productivity 
think of these more indeterminate crops that continue to flower and produce food so that you can be rocking your dinner table with fresh homegrown food and herbs for as long of the season as possible. So I hope that you glean something of value from that and there'll be links in the comments below for some other videos that support this and to our seed website where you can obtain awesome organic open pollinated seeds to have your garden thrive.